When you watch a newscast on CBS 5, you may not realize what goes on behind the scenes. On the air, you'll see anchors, reporters, or videotape. But behind the scenes, you'll find a hard-working group of talented professionals. Each one plays a crucial role in delivering the news to your home. Here's a taste of a day in the life of our newsroom. Hey, music, open mic, go. Good morning, everybody. If you're yeah, in Peninsula, you if you're hang tight, you're in for a long morning. The season. order is in the uh, room down there. Well, well, you can imagine what you're talking about, borrowing and selling. There's a lot of interest. Take double. Simon Price is up now for us this morning. Simon, thank you. Take double. Numbers very similar to yesterday from the 60s coast side to the 90s in our inland areas. The five day forecast features weather where you live unsettled through the period. Well, the red Hey, Julie, why don't you give the highway patrol a call? See if there are any road closures in the area due to this fire or if there's any impact on traffic due to this fire. Okay. The morning news is already on the air as another day begins in the newsroom. Soon, Chopper 5 is sending back video of a breaking news story. In this case, a fire caused by lightning. As pictures are fed in, the assignment desk managing editors sort through possible story ideas and crew logistics. They create a preliminary rundown, which is a working blueprint of what could end up on the evening news. Um, at 11 a.m. today, community leaders just discussed their opposition to the Governor Gray Davis recall in Emeryville. Then again, you said we have five reporters. We have five reporters. We, have... we had six. Murphy called in six. Okay. We have Sherry Hu and Hank Plant and Lynn Ramirez and Tony Romano and Jeff Schaap. Sherry who called, she wants to do some checking on Highland Hospital's trauma center, still facing the budget acts. President Bush, I don't know if you heard, but he did make a about California in the recall. By 9.20, the rundown is distributed at the morning meeting. Meeting, show producers, the executive producer, managing editor, and assistant news director all gather in one room to discuss the rundown, what news stories to cover, and how, and for what shows. Reporters call in by phone to pitch their ideas. Each reporter is assigned to work with a photographer. And Hank's going to just concentrate on the budget. All right, so we'll have her do that then, too. Okay, so that's Sherry. Hank is set. I think he's fine. Len, let's leave open for a moment. Tony, open. And then Je Jeffrey, do we want him to do the desalinization? It's an issue, but... If we have more reports, I say, yeah, go for it. I like that story. The goal of this conference to come up with a viable way to do this for to make the West Coast. Coast. For the West Coast. For it's just know. a big story. Yeah, I, I, I see for that. Okay. And it's not Marin County specific, if no. that's a concern. All right. It's, it's, it's region-wide. Oh, okay. okay. I, um, I would argue, <laughs> let's give, let's keep Jeffrey on that one. And he, he has to take the story past a bunch of men sitting around a table saying, we must make our water safer. Well, let, let, let's revisit it then. Do we want to put somebody on it, as opposed to just trying to piecemeal it? If it's if it's such a big talker, based on what we've got, we've got Lynn and, and Tony left. Uh, Lynn Ramirez, CDF, what do we want to call that, CDF? Youth Defenders or something CDF like that. suspension? CDF Youth? CDF, CDF Youth. The meeting lasts for about an hour. When it's over, producers head back to the newsroom to arrange or format their shows. Each newscast lasts a certain amount of time. The producer decides on the length of each story, where that story appears in the newscast, and assigns writers. And all of this goes on before the new newscast begins. 40 seconds of chopper still. Okay, hey, Les, uh, Simon is asking for 40 seconds of uh, chopper material, so if you could cut about 40 seconds for it, uh, that'd be awesome. Crucial to any news team are production assistants, or PAs. The PA tracks down and cues up videotape, often runs last-minute scripts upstairs to the anchor desk and to the control room. In the control room, you have another team of professionals, including the show director, assistant director, technical director, and audio technician. Together, this team takes all the elements of the newscast, the edited stories, the remote live shots, the anchors, the graphics, and electronically mixes them into one smooth newscast. By the way, PAs also run teleprompter, and that allows the news anchor to read a script and look at you at the same time. We must not let them steal our thunder. 
As the noon show is underway, the evening news reporters are hard at work out in the field, gathering news, looking at tape, and writing their reports. Reporters then call in and talk to the managing editor, who double-checks the content of the story and helps add any finishing touches. I think it works that we start off with this grassroots, you know, we're going to get out the vote to stop this recall, which is good, then you've got all of these great bites. Then we kind of make sort of a jarring, but it makes sense, transition to Bush. But I think what's important is not only the comments that he made, but then also the California. The president steered clear taking sides. He may be forced to, though, when he visits California in August. Now we end with a soundbite with President Bush. That's good. I don't even know if the package is edited. She didn't seem to know. Well, he has a soundbite. He has a soundbite. Sound sound he might have a little bit of that. At about 2.15 in the afternoon, show producers meet once more, but this time with the video producer and the show director to go over the formats, double-check the status of stories, and make sure that everyone is on the same page. The 11 p.m. news crew enters the meeting where they will be briefed on the day's events. And then, some breaking news, a fire in Fairfield. Yeah, we're watching it now. Texas Road and Interstate 80 in Fairfield. The news anchor all jotting down the facts, getting ready for a news cut-in. Good afternoon, I'm Kate Kelly in the CBS 5 newsroom. We have some breaking news to report. A grass fire is burning in Fairfield right now, and it is burning close to homes. Uh, scoreboard, post game, then we'll do the age trade. They got Ian from Cincinnati. While the news cut-in takes place, the sports department puts the finishing touches on its sports cast, and the weather team polishes their forecast, checking the last Doppler radar. Important deadlines are fast approaching. The show is about one hour away. What may look like chaos is really well orchestrated chaos. That is, uh, it's both sides, though. Van 11, go ahead. So, uh, can I come up on Central? 10 4, I want to just take a look at your signal here and make sure I've got you peaked up here. Go ahead and uh, roll your tape. We're speeding on you. Live crews in the field raise the masts on their vans. These contain electronics which transmit a microwave signal back to the station, allowing tape to be fed in and reporters to go live from remote locations. Reporters and photographers begin feeding in videotape, one after another, often in rapid succession. The video is recorded on other tapes which are then passed off to the video producer. The video producer oversees a team of editors whose job it is to edit the news footage together quickly and accurately. While well, everyone seems to have an opinion about Governor Davis and the recall fight, one newscast is now on the air. As video editors continue to work, often rushing edited stories back out to the video producer, who double checks what it is and runs them into the tape playback. A lot of double checking goes on. From show producers verifying the live shots, video producers confirming what stories are in, to the show director marking off his format before he goes into the booth. A new generation of Weight Watchers is turning to the Atkins diet. With Once a show starts, the news waits for no one. These shows are broadcast live and they cannot be re-edited. Good evening everybody, I'm Ken Bass, Stephen. And I'm Kate Kelly. Well, today, Governor Davis visited the Bay Area, responding to calls for another prominent Democrat to get on the recall ballot. Political editor Hank Plant reports on the governor's efforts to rein in Democratic defectors. Hank? Kate, can Governor Greg Davis downplay the break in Democratic ranks around him? The governor visited a domestic violence center in San Francisco's Chinatown this afternoon. Meanwhile, Governor Davis got a boost from Bay Area ministers today. As Sherry Hu reports from Oakland, they are mobilizing yeah. an effort to yeah. defeat the recall. Today, in his Rose Garden news conference, the president steered clear taking sides. Now, so far, 57 people have taken out papers to be on the recall ballot to replace Governor Davis, and Hank, that's only a survey of 16 counties. Long way to go, Sherry. Who knows? And thank you, Sherry. See, was the first television station in Northern California the air, and since the late 40s, we've been broadcasting to the Bay Area. We hope this tape gives you an idea that it takes an electronic village of many different professionals to put on a newscast.